Um, the main aim of the, um, this week, the safety week, is about um, highlighting you know, the safety issue among staff, um, about the hospital and about the community. That's why we um, you know, want to highlight and educate our staff as well, the responsibility for them at work and um, for the community side. Is it mainly though for your staff? Because we see we've got all the staff out here in the car park and with the demonstration with the fire behind us. Is it mainly for the staff though, more than let's say the patients or the visitors? Um, I think for the staff who have the um, competency about safety at work and you know in consequences they can provide a high standard of care for the patient in emergency situation. So they're you know, competent in what they're doing. How many staff do you have here? Um, we had about um, 600 staff in the hospital. Has that grown recently with your expansion of the new building? Yeah, that's right, because you know, like, like you say, the expansion of the hospital, um, a lot of facility that created and we have employed more staff. Do you do this every year? Um, yeah, once, um, once a year that we have this safety week. And the main part was this fire drill. You started it from an office, but did you practice in the sort of uh, the patients' rooms as well? Yeah. In um, previous year, we um, choose the clinical area, so we have the ward um, or um, laundry department, you know. But this year, we try to highlight it for the back office. So we start the fire at the, um, the fifth floor, which is our main back office, and then um, we want to create um, patient involvement as well. So we choose them um, to ev evacuate patients from ICU and nursery and OB. We saw the staff, it wasn't a real fire by the way, it was just smoke, wasn't it? Yeah, but right. they, they were using fire extinguishers and they were running around. Uh, do you think they did well? Um, um, I wasn't there on the fifth floor, but in ICU I think the staff did, you know, according to the plan and procedure that we have. And they got fire escapes, they ran down. And yeah, and for the main thing is the patient is safe. Do you have sprinklers in all the buildings? Um, in the water that comes out in case of fire? Yeah, in the, main, um, in the new building, you know, um, it's all equipped with um, fire um, extinguisher and um, the water sprinkle. But uh, with the old side, we're trying to implement it, you know, each section at the moment. I mean, uh, the main danger from fire is, is uh, old, unexpected accidents, but uh, how, what sort of extinguishers are you using now? Uh, chemical sprays? Yeah, there are different types of um, um, extinguisher and each um, tr use different source of the fire and our staff is trained to be able to identify you know, which fire and which extinguisher they should use for the best. Out here in the car park they were demonstrating with a small hut, a wooden hut barn sort of, uh, first with chemicals. Your staff are actually doing that as well, yeah? And then with water, they didn't seem to be so uh, keen to use the water. <laughs> I think probably they get, you know, afraid to get wet. <laughs> it can be quite dangerous. I mean, just doing an exercise like this is quite organisation, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. That's why we have to have the government um, organisation that come and teach us and, you know, supervise us as well for our staff to be able to do it effectively. And, you know, for the real thing, they should be able to use it, you know, before the local government, um, you know, organisation come to help us. But even your office staff are quite good at sort of first aid and you have the sort of nurses I know normally but uh, they're all going to be ready, they're all going to be prepared for any sort of... Yeah, of course, thing. because you know we have the um, emergency team that responsible for, you know, not just our, sale, um, our staff and the patient as well. Um, with this sort of new building, um, Peter will bring you in here, is it, is it working well? You've been open for about a year now, yeah? Well, that's right. We opened up about a year and uh, the facility is working well. It's all fully operational. We've opened up a number of new clinics. Uh, medical tourism is doing very, very well. We're bringing in a lot of patients from, from overseas, particularly for plastic surgery procedures. So, yeah, well, I think we're all very happy with the, uh, the new facility. Has it increased your capacity for the number of patients you can treat? certainly has um, and we've increased the number of uh, inpatient rooms by about 50 uh, but we're also now refurbishing the other old awards so when it's all complete uh, we've certainly increased our capacity to look after both our patients and admitted patients as well. Do you know the numbers are sort of foreign as opposed to Thai patients you deal with? Well I think that generally we look at about 30% of foreign patients compared to, to Thai patients but that's very seasonal. Obviously we look after a lot more during the high season uh, and not as many during the, the low season. Obviously the foreign patients that we all know, residents, we know as Phuket International Hospital but in Thai it's called Siri Roj Hospital still, yeah? Is there any confusion over this sometimes? The two names? 
and we want to keep you know both names really for the local you know people as well because you know like um, Dr. Um, Anurod um, want to believe that the hostel is for the local people which is the Phuket people and of course the foreigners. Right. And you've also part of the safety week you had a parade earlier in the week going around the streets or all around the big shops here near, nearby here. Tell us what was the main aim of that parade? Yeah. We just want to highlight to the um, community that you know we as a hospital have the um, responsibility for the community as well and the project that we do is parade is about highlighting the global warming things like you know you need to cycling more and about um, separating the waste um, at source which is health environment as well. Right. You walked all the way around the main road Plus, index, big C, central, yeah? Yeah, probably about two kilometres, yeah, just around circus from the hospital. Do you have any sort of arrangement with these big public places, superstores, you know, in the event of a, a major fire accident, to be able to get there first and, and treat injured? Um, I think because the local people will, you know, understand that um, if they call us in emergency, we will try to get there as soon as possible. And plus, you know, the location of the hospital at the moment is near to the, you know, big complex that around the bypass road. Mm. Obviously convenient, but you are ready either to run there or to, to take the car. But this brings up the point about the U-turn, Peter. The U-turn was closed opposite your hospital because of... Was it too many accidents? Well, it was closed because it was closed because you know the hospital had noticed an increasing number of accidents because people were technically illegally doing U-turns and using the the opening for not what it was supposed to be used for. So we we wrote off to the authorities and, and suggested that you know something be done. Uh, as a result of that, it was closed. Um, I notice now that the motorbikes have moved the barriers and that the motorbikes are still using it. Uh, but it creates a dilemma for us because it is a public safety issue but it's also an emergency access to the hospital primarily because it's an ambulance emergency access and if we close it uh, it means that we have to detail our, our ambulances away from the hospital which will relate, mean longer response times. So you mean the ambulances can go through there? They, they will move the bollards if they need to go through? No, they cannot. At the present time the bollards are in place. The motorbikes have moved the bollard, so the motorbikes can uh, can still do the U-turn, but it's it's closed to motor vehicles and ambulances at the moment, and is likely to remain that way. Although we are discussing options, um, naturally we'd like it open because it's uh, it's an emergency access to the hospital. But on the other hand, we've got the public safety issue of people illegally doing U-turns and causing accidents. So it's a, a bit of a catch-22, which we're negotiating with the authorities at the moment about what we can do.